Hello everyone and welcome to Toy Geek Maniac. I'm your host, Constance Miller. There is a lot of groundwork to cover in this episode, so I'm not going to waste any time, so let's get started with Jack's Pacific, The Simpsons, Homer Simpson. In my last episode, I did a review of Bart, now here is Homer. In the last episode, I talked about my history with The Simpsons. So I'm not going to go into it with this episode, but needless to say, I'm just going to say that they're a relevant part of pop culture history, and therefore, I must have them. <laughs> and it's not that I've never been a fan of the show. Listen to me explaining all over again. But anyway, here we go. Articulation. Homer gets a turnable head. There's no look down or up. He gets a good lateral lift in the arms. There is a shoulder turn and a bicep turn. Single jointed elbows. Flex in the wrist. Turnable waist. Not much of a lateral lift in the leg. There is a bit of a kick out, a little bit of a kick back. Single jointed knee. And a turn in the foot. Not bad articulation for a figure of this size and dimension. Honestly. Now let's move on to Homer's accessories. So here is a box and it is filled with donuts. Minus one. And guess where that donut is? It is already almost half eaten. This is pretty exciting if you're a Simpsons fan. You can actually place the half-eaten donut in Homer's hand, which is awesome. And the box shows that the donut box is displayed on his arm. I suppose if you're crafty enough, you can get it to do it. There we go. Whoa, there we went. <laughs> now, back in the day when Disney was having the Renaissance, the late 80s, early to mid 90s, I was a big fan. And I saw all the movies in the theater. Even the bad ones. Well, no, I can't really say that there were bad ones. Because each of them holds a, a certain place in my heart. There's some I like more than others. And maybe I'll do a ranking. Maybe I will. But in any case, I purchased all the dolls made by Mattel and of every movie. And I had quite the 
collection, to say the least. And it was extraordinary. I wish I still had it. It, it would mean so much to me if I did. However, life happens, and you have to deal with the consequences. But, thankfully, I was able to find a new doll of one of my favorite non-princess female characters. And here she is. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Megara from Hercules. Now, obviously, I haven't opened her, and this is, I think, a bit better to some degree than the original that I had. I think the dress on the original was a lot more authentic and detailed. I'll have to take a look once I open her up. but. Megara is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite characters of all time that isn't a Disney princess. And I think the box work is stunning. Now I just have to take her out of the package. Okay, so this is stunning box work. I... If I cut things in packages, I would definitely do that with this, but I'm not going to because it's who I am. There are very, very, very few things that I keep in packages, and it's very hard for me not to open them. So, we're going to take a look. So here is the look at Megara, or Meg, and there are so many differences to the original doll than this one that some of it I like, some of it I don't. I think her dress leaves a lot to be desired. There were layers to the original as it displayed in the movie. Uh, that is missing here. Um, I like the sparkle aspect of it. And the sandals, I'm really disappointed with. They don't fit on her feet um, all that well. I can show you a little bit. And I was pretty sure that the color of her sandals were also lace up, at least to her calves and were the same color as her dress. I'll have to investigate that. Usually those details don't escape me, but I am prone to being wrong, so. But other than that, um, the sash along the side and on the hips, looks a little cheap. However, the face sculpt is priceless. And it really gives off the vibe of the movie. Her hair is very, very full of products. Her bangs are a little bit movable, but her ponytail is so extremely stiff. Which isn't a bad thing, especially since I'm only going to be displaying her. But 
I would have preferred it to be a little bit more loose. But she's very poseable. Can't do much with the legs because of her skirts. She does bend in the knee, not at the ankle or the foot, which kind of ruins a little bit of the aesthetic that I wanted for her when I place her on the stand. But overall, I'm happy to have this because I miss my original Mega. So, let's get her looking a little sassy. Because she is. Naturally, I'm gonna save the best for last. And this is something that is deeply personal to me and you will know why when you see it. I have no words, honestly, for what this means to me. So, I'll let everything speak for itself. This is... Try to get this without reflections. The Barbie Tribute Collection to Laverne Cox, a transgender woman and celebrity, and this is life to me. Because this represents myself and many of the trans women out there who don't get to see themselves in pop culture very often. And I really would love to keep her in the box. However, I don't know if it's already been opened. It was shipped directly from Amazon, so... I don't know if it was a third-party sale. It doesn't look like the doll was tampered with, but the packaging was. So I might as well just open her and... and be proud. While I really don't feel that this is a good resemblance to Laverne Cox, I definitely think that it does her justice. And it's a beautiful doll, regardless. And she has the what Mattel calls in the Barbie community a made-to-move body where she has double-jointed multifunctional elbows, wrist flexes, pivoting head, there's no turn in the waist but you can bend her forward or bend her back, depending on what you want to do. Let her lift. Um, she's got tights on, so that's not going to be a great asset. Um, multifunctional double-jointed knees. And she has amazing shoes on. This is a gorgeous doll. 
and I'm so proud to have her. So proud to have her in my collection. I'm a Barbie lover, so I don't collect a lot of high-scale Barbies. I collect those that speak to me, and obviously this one speaks to me. So I'll show you what she comes with. She comes with the stand, which is great, because I'm running out of doll stands. <laughs> And she comes with this Certificate of Authenticity, which is a staple of the line that Mattel creates for Barbie and basing them on real-life people. That will be it for this episode of Toy Geek Maniac. I tried to trim it down as much as possible. So you didn't have to sit here for 30 minutes or longer uh, just to hear me rant about my love of toys. My objective is to show them off, but I do want to show the deep meaning behind the reasons why I collect what I collect. So thanks for bearing with me. I appreciate it. And I appreciate all the likes, the subscribes, the comments, all that stuff. So keep that up. Oh, excuse me. And I will see you in the next video. Love and light to you all.